Now, I'm hoping we get past Donald Trump by, say, January. <laughs> you know, after Iowa, New Hampshire, maybe South Carolina. Um, if you're a betting person, if you go to the Vegas odds, I'm sure they're saying he's probably get the nomination. I still think there's a reasonable chance he doesn't get the nomination. If not Trump, who on the Republican side of the well, aisle? I, so the, the argument I make, I make more of a practical argument. There's two reasons I don't think Trump should be, should be the nominee or president. One is a practical, one's a principal reason. The practical reason is we lose with this guy. I mean, he won, he won in 2016, then we lost the House in 18 because of him. We lost 20, the presidency. We lost the Senate. Then we lost the Senate again in 2022. We lost 10 to 15 seats in 2022 in the House because of him. And, and if, you look at, if you look at the Electoral College, it's basically four, maybe five states are going to determine this thing. Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, and maybe Pennsylvania. And what you see when you look around these states is it's the new swing voter is not the blue-collar rural voter. That's, that's Republican. And it's not the urban, it's not Madison and Milwaukee. It's the suburbanites. It's college-educated suburbanites. It's, we call them wild counties, Washington, Ozaki, Waukesha here. And take that to these other states. Do you think those suburban voters like Donald Trump more since January 6th? I mean, good grief. They didn't vote for him this last time. They're not going to vote for him again. So I try to make more of a practical argument to would-be Trump supporters that we lose with the guy, pick somebody else. But I think given Biden's weaknesses, um, he just is weak in the polling. I think you also have to make another argument, which is, he's just unfit for office. Um, look, I'm, I'm an old school guy, I guess I'm old fashioned. I think leaders should endeavor to be honest, ethical, moral people who try to set standards for themselves and lead by example for the rest of the country. Donald Trump doesn't try to do any of that. He does the opposite of it, frankly. So I just don't think he's fit for the job. Yeah, the problem is, I don't know how, who's in this room, but people who already agree with me, they weren't going to vote for him in the first place. The challenge for, for our party is we've got to go convince the people who, who are willing to vote for him not to vote for him. And I think the better argument is the electability argument. I think if, it, it, let, let me put it this way, the party that puts the first fresh face forward wins this election. If the Democrats somehow swap out Biden with I don't know who, they're going to win. If we swap out Trump, and easier, I think it's something easier to do, frankly, we're going to win. If it's Nikki Haley, if it's Tim Scott, if it's Mike Pence, if it's Ron DeSantis, I don't know. Maybe not that vivid guy, but if, if it's, you know, <laughs> I don't know him. <laughs> but, but, if, but if we put forward a fresh face, we're going to win. Look, Nikki Haley had 11 good minutes in the last debate, and, and a week later, she's six points over Biden in the country. So, and the other last point I'll say is don't look at these national polls. You've got to look at the state by state. Look at the state polls in those five states, and that tells you something. I think you already you started to answer this, but if you were a betting man, <laughs> who would you say is going to win the next presidential election and why? Well, I'd say if I had to bet, it'd be Biden, because if it's Biden-Trump, I think Biden wins. Um, I personally would rather not see that. Um, I would rather see a Republican win, not named Donald Trump. If you look at our primary field, and we've got another debate tomorrow. Honestly, I'm just really looking to see who comes out of Iowa, who comes out of New Hampshire. We've got two South Carolinians running. I think if you do the math on sort of the, the way it all works, by mid-February, you know, before Super Tuesday, if, if we've got somebody that's shown some momentum, you know, that could win one of these states, my hope and prayer is that the rest of the field gets the heck out of the race. Because if two-thirds of the people, two-thirds of Republicans want somebody other than Trump, but Trump's got his 33%, and it's staying with him. But if we're slicing up the other 66% with six people, he wins. But if we can consolidate this in time for one person, that person wins. And frankly, I, I don't know who it's going to be, but, but I, I think you'd, you'd say Haley, Scott, um, Pence, or DeSantis right now. But I don't, that's just odds. If any one of them gets the nomination, I think they win the presidency.